on four, Clint Boone of the Inspiral Carpets faces the star test. Hello, Clint. Hi. Welcome to Star Test, the computer interview. It's just the two of us here, but viewers will be phoning in during the show to vote on whether or not you are telling the truth. If they believe you, there will be the chance to play a clip from your latest video. If not, a mystery forfeit will appear in its place, so please, Try to answer my questions honestly. Here are nine categories of questions. Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Wheat and sour. Please choose any number. Number two. What is the worst name someone has called you to your face? Clueless Beds. Good to see Mr. Sean Ryder. Mm -mm. Number 10, please. How might you best repay Sean Ryder's compliment? Just to say, let's see what happens in the future. Or even better still, just to ignore it. <clears throat> I find that the press are like doing the best to create an animosity which never existed. Clueless. Can't say anything bad about Mr. Ryder, he's all right. Good geezer. Number nine. How convinced are you that you have good taste? I like my taste. I'm glad I've got my taste. Hmm. I think I'm quite discerning, really. Thirteen. If you were a bug, where would you plant yourself? I'd be a crab. Get inside Sean Ryder's underpants and give him some welly. <laughs> Number 14, please. Who are your rivals? I'm being part of the Manchester scene. You expect me to say the Stone Roses and the Happy Mondays. But it's by no means rivalry. We're all competing in different markets and different directions. Yeah, it's not a competition. Number four. How do you feel about the attitude of Happy Mondays and the Stone Roses? <clears throat> we kind of. We respect them for doing things the way they do it, but that isn't the way that we decide to do our kind of thing. Number six. Is there a black sheep in your family?
and out, please. Please choose any number. Number 12. How well do you react to criticism? Quite positively. Quite humorously. Criticism's all right. I mean, if you use it, if you use it positively, you can turn it into something very good. You can, you can make it ironic. That's what we do. In spirals, do that. Always have done. People call us the ugliest band in Britain, so we make ourselves even uglier. Number thirteen, please. What do you most want people never to find out about you? I'm not, I've nothing, never had piles, never been a bank robber. Uh, I had a moustache, I admit that. <laughs> Did wear a tash once, but... No, nothing, no skeletons in my cupboard. Number 10, please. What were your first thoughts on waking up this morning? This morning I didn't wake up. I was already awake from the night before. Um, but my first thoughts were, I got to make myself ugly for the TV. So I took a shower, sandpapered my face. and came to this. Number eight, please. Where do you draw the line in interviews? Anything in our character or our makeup which shouldn't be passed on to a teenage audience is kept very much out of interviews. I mean, there's fan letters that I've got at home that are from like five and seven year old kids. So there's no way that I intend to talk about any particular drug which I fancy or any particular sexual perversion that I fancy. Number one, please. How do you look in drag? Oh, I know you're talking. Yeah. Yeah, I look good. And my face becomes very thin when I put my hair up on top of my head in a French plait. A bit of blushing on the cheekbones. Um, bright red lipstick, not fleshy coloured lipstick, bright, really bright red lipstick. Um, turquoise eyeshadow. That's a bit of mascara. And the body's all right, the legs are beautiful, really nice legs. Quite airy though, so we've got to kind of put, you know, black tights on. Um, close up of the legs. Yeah. Never suppress one's female instincts. Please select a new category. Love and passion. Please choose any number. Number one. Do you share the same taste in food as your partner? Yes. Um, yes, 
Yeah. She likes Chinese food. And she likes her mother's cooking as well as I do. Mmm. That comes in handy, that, doesn't it? Liking the same food. Number 14, please. How does your girlfriend feel about being stuck in the office doing the mail out whilst you're living it up in Dorking? <laughs> I think she's quite happy with it. Yeah, it's weird that one, isn't it? She used to come with us and sell t-shirts and things, but... I mean, to be, there's like, there's girls in this country who would give the right arms to be fully, full-time employed by in spirals. And I think she appreciates that. She's got a nice little job. It's better than what she used to do. And she has daily contact with me. It's quite nice for her. It's a nice office, beautiful office, that. Glass roof. High tech furniture, two computers. Number seven, please. How sexist are you? Ah. Uh. How sexist are you? According to the enemy, or according to me. According to the enemy, we are skirt lifting, beer swilling, girl chasing, and all that. But, um, I think, I don't know, I sympathise with women more than even some women do. I mean, I can relate to what they feel and what they think. And, I think their involvement in society is just as relevant as what mine is, or what the man is. I don't think I'm sexist at all. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for women, would I? Number nine, please. How do you rate yourself in bed? Artistic, <laughs> melodic, not as gentle as I should be. <laughs> I'm quite good. I'd love to be a woman and sleep with myself. That'd be a nice experience, wouldn't it? Who is your favourite film director? Uh, David Lynch. How many crazy shirts do you have? Paisley shirts. Three. Which is your favourite pizza topping? Pineapple. Who is your favourite painter? Andy Warhol. Who is your favourite actress? Joanna Lumley. What do you wear in bed? Underpants. <laughs> Would you rather run a mile or eat six boiled eggs? <clears throat> um, the boiled eggs. Which is your favourite milkshake flavour? Chocolate. Which is your favourite drug? Paracetamol. Hey, Sailor, Lula. This here is the man himself. Bobby is Sailor and Lula. Two most recent strandees. The economic variety. Bobby Peru. Just like the country. Bobby just rolled into town a couple days ago. Yeah, Bobby here is the most exciting item to hit Big Tuna since the 86 Cyclone sheared the roof off the high school. You from, uh, Texas, Mr. Perot? Oh, uh, 
I'm from all over. I see you was in the Marines. Four years. Now, please select a new category. Bread and butter. Please choose any number. Number nine. How rich are you? Um, wouldn't you like to know, you nasty little computer? How much did you cost to build? I'd say you cost about 4,000 quid. So I could buy about 10 of you and put them in the bank. You start to realise after a while that money is not anything at all, even though it's everything to a lot of people. I used to lie awake at night worrying about money. And then I got with it and realised what was happening in the world. How rich are you? Rich enough. Number 12, please. Where did your furniture company go wrong? We didn't sell enough furniture. We didn't follow our feminine instincts. We employed too many people. And we couldn't borrow enough money to sustain our economic viability. Number three, please. How generous are you? I'm generous. I think I'm generous enough. But then again, I never throw things away. I never throw. I'm dead thrifty. I've got a reputation in the band for being the thrifty one, along with Graham, my thrift sister, as we call ourselves. Number two, please. What retirement age do you have in mind? 33, like Jesus did. Now, please select a new category. Honour and justice. Please choose any number. Right. When did you last feel guilty? Probably this morning, when the makeup lady put air spray on my head. Because I thought, if my fans knew that I had air spray on, they'd be sick. Number 10, please. How much justice is there in the accusation that your merchandising is more popular than your records. That's total. We sell a lot of t-shirts, make a lot of money out of it. But we sell a lot of records. Number 12. When did you last smuggle goods through customs? I think October. We did a um, Japanese tour and I bought stacks of equipment. Then I had to fly to America and I bought stacks of equipment. Then I had to go to Canada and I bought stacks of stuff. Then I had to go back to America and bought a load more in. And every time I was smuggling, well, it's not really smuggling, is it? You get a CD player in Japan, it costs you 300 quid, but over here it's like 700. If you've got to do it, it's practical. Practical economics. Um, so by the time I got into England, I had a suitcase full of contraband, as they call it. I was <laughs> myself, but... Because <laughs> they charge you, you know? Silly, isn't it? Why should the Japanese have stuff cheaper than us, just because they make it? Number two, please. Are there
there any records you would like to set straight? Mm. We have a lot of respect in Sparrow Carpets. I have a lot of respect for the Happy Mondays and for Sean Ryder. And the Stone Roses and the Charlatans. We're not sexist. We are, however, northern working class capitalists. We drew a lot of inspiration from groups that will never get any recognition for it. Thank you to all those groups. And we aren't as rich as you may think. What question would you have liked to have been asked? Why do you spend so much of your time involved with making music? Please answer your own question because it guarantees a certain degree of immortality. What question are you glad you weren't asked? Do you dye your hair? How would you have answered? Yes, rich copper gold by Weller. You are now invited to select five characteristics from the on-screen menu which you feel best illustrate your personality. Easy going. Patient. Flirtatious. Modest. Secure. The phone poll results show that the viewers do not believe all that you have been saying. Tough. <laughs> it's all been true. It's gotta be a loose thing. It's gotta be a loose thing. Say what you're saying Go 